The sample function is used to draw elements out of vectors at random. For instance, if I wanted a sample from the vector that's just a sequence of increasing numbers from 1 to 10, and I want to draw samples of size 3, I can say sample 1 through 10, comma 3. And then I'll just be pulling three elements at random from that vector. By default, sample is not going to sample with replacement. So this argument replace defaults to false. You can set it to true if you do want to sample with replacement. Sample is really useful for generating null sampling distributions. For instance, if we wanted to look at the sampling distribution of sample means. Let's work with the data set called links. You can see that links is a vector, and specifically it's a time series vector. So if we wanted to plot links, we would see that it's the number of links captured through time from 1821 through 1934. We've got the entire time series here and all of these numbers have some mean. So the mean through time is a known value. In this case it's about 1538. But maybe we're only working with a subset of these data. A sample from all these years. Maybe we have 30 years at a time. I'll call that our sample size. And what we want to do is repeatedly sample from this time series and look at the sampling distribution of means. So let's take n rep repetitions and we'll start with 20. At every replication I'm going to sample 30 years from this time series, calculate a mean, and then store that value. So I need to initialize an object to store the values in. I'll call it S means. And I'll initialize that to be a vector of NAs that has length N rep. Because I'm doing this repeatedly, I'm going to use a for loop. And inside of this for loop, I want to do two things. First, I'm going to store my samp, which is going to be my sample from the time series. So I'm going to be sampling from this vector, links, and I'm drawing out sample size number of years, in this case 30. And then I want to store the mean of that sample. We can visualize this result with a histogram. And we can also compare our results to the true known value. So I'll draw a vertical line at the population mean. I'll also make it dashed. So we can see that we're in the vicinity of the true population mean. What happens if we increase the number of replicate samples, say from 20 to 1000? Then we're starting to approach a sampling distribution of means that seems somewhat normal. This is even more pronounced if we move up to 10,000 samples.